now, this moment, where is he? So the Maulana thought for a moment and he said that he is in Jannatul Firdaus, heavenly bliss with Allah Bari Ta'ala. Out of that answer came the second question. He said, all right, all right, Maulana Sahib, tell us, where was he when his grandson Hussein was martyred at Karbala? Where was he then? See, the Maulana again thought for a moment and he said he was still in Jannatul Firdaus, heavenly bliss with Allah Bari Ta'ala. Out of that answer came the third question. It was all worked out, prepared. He said, all right, all right, tell us now, Maulana Sahib, that if your prophet was with his Allah in heaven, when his grandson Hussein was being butchered, martyred at Karbala, didn't he ask his Allah for help? Ya Bari Ta'ala, look what they're doing to my grandchild, please help him out of his difficulty. Didn't he cry out for help to Allah? And there was a long pause. Long pause. And the reverend couldn't hold his peace. He says, come on, come on, started banging his feet, come on, come on. Didn't he ask his Allah for help? So the Maulana said, yes, he did. And so what did he say? What did Allah say? Because we know he was in help. What did he say? And there was an inordinate pause, an extra long pause. And again, the reverend couldn't hold his peace, started stamping his feet, said, come on, come on. He thought he had the kill and the people also felt that Maulana ne mara diya. Maulana got us chopped off. Khatam kara diya hume. Says, come on, come on. So the Maulana says that Allah cried. Allah ne ro diya. So what? Allah cried? He says, yes, Allah cried. He said, I couldn't save my own son, Jesus. How can I save your grandson? And the debate was over. And the debate was over. You see, it was only a matching of the wits. It has nothing to do with facts. This is one trying to be cleverer than the other. As the saying goes, that twice armed is he whose cause is just. If you are on the right path, your strength is double because you know you're fighting for your rights. Twice armed is he whose cause is just. But thrice armed is he who gets in first. Like our Jewish cousins every time. You know, we go into battle in 48, the guy gave us a hand. 56, he gave us a knock out. 67, another knock. For the first time, the Muslims took the initiative was in 1973. And again, with the help of America, the Jews were able to to restrain us. See? But the guy is getting in first. So he, now you are in the right. But the guy gets in first. He knocks you out. He knocks you out. He knocks you out. So the reverend was knocked out. The debate was over. But this is the type of things that they were doing. And as a result of that, we have contact with this country because they ruled our country. Others, you wouldn't be here. You are all speaking English. You're listening to me speaking to you in English. Why? Because they came and ruled us for over a hundred years. If the French were ruling us, we'd be speaking French. If the Portuguese had been ruled us, we'd be speaking Portuguese. If the Spanish were ruling us, we'd be speaking Spanish. Can't you see? You are all English speaking people. What for? Because they ruled us. They are the ones who created us that we can talk to them in their own mother tongue now. Another example from this book about another confrontation. You see, the Christian missionaries, they have the patience and the perseverance to follow up any opportunity. Unlike the Muslims, you see, you have an argument, a debate, a discourse with a non-Muslim and you seem to have got him cornered. What do you do? You start going around boasting, say, well, you know, I had him fixed up, man. I shut him up. Finish, you're satisfied. Not the Christian. He will follow you up. Day in and day out, day in and day out, until you are converted. Or you say, hey, don't darken my door again, otherwise I'll put a bullet through you, I'll put a knife through you. That you haven't got the guts to say that. Nor am I expecting you to do that. But, unless you say that, that guy will never let you go. You give him a finger, he'll catch you by the hand, he'll never let you go. They have the patience and the perseverance which we haven't got. Shame on us. Shame on us. So, this Christian missionary got stuck into an Arab sheikh. 
day in and day out, preaching to him that you're wasting your time, Yasha. Pray five times a day, up and down, up and down. You fast for one whole month and you straightjacket your life. You don't drink, you don't gamble, you don't eat the pig and on and on. Allah is not hungry for that. You want salvation? You believe that he sent his son into the world and he died for your sins and salvation is yours. God Almighty, he came down to earth and he died for your sins. Believe and be saved. And he won't let go. Every day he's there. Every day he's there. He's making life miserable for this poor Arab Sheikh. How is he to get out of the difficulty? So he plans a strategy. He tells his his prime minister, his wazir, he said, look man, tomorrow when he comes, I want you to whisper something in my ears. Okay. He said, yes, that's all. And the missionary came. Assalamu alaikum. So the Arab, as usual, ahlan wa sahlan. Beautiful words of welcome. The most beautiful words of welcome in any language. Ahlan wa sahlan. Just think that you are a member of the family and sahl be at ease. If you want to pick your nose, you may do so. Like in Nam, it's a standard ease. Now you can do what you like. Ahlan wa sahlan. So the guy sits down. And he starts. Same old story. So the, the, the minister comes along and whispers something in the races, in the chief's ears. And the chief begins began to cry like a woman who has lost her husband. He, he started to cry. <laughs> so the priest wants to know what's wrong, what has happened. <laughs> so don't talk. So come on, man, come, please tell. Tell us. You know we may sympathize with you. <laughs> no, you can't. He's crying, crying. Acting. Actually, he's acting. So the priest is more eager to know what has happened, what's the sad news. So he said, you know, I just got the sad news that Akhi Jibreel, Jibreel alayhi salam, the Archangel Gabriel, he died. Mamat, marge, Jibreel alayhi salam, marge. So the priest says, you fool, angels don't die. So the Arab Sheikh says, and you fool, you telling me that God died? Now see, this is the type of arguments that have been carrying on. But now they are becoming more sophisticated. You see, here is a book. The subject of this evening's talk. The challenge of Islam. This one says in South Africa, but the challenge of Islam is everywhere. Because Islam is the only faith which claims for this honor, this status, you see there are only two religions really on the face of the earth which are competing for the hearts and minds of mankind. Only two, really. Two missionary religions, Christianity and Islam. They are the only two religions which are out to change people. So Islam claims to confirm, to correct, complete and supersede Christianity. It's the only religion which claims that. The Hindu would tell the Christian, say, look man, you be a good Christian and I'll be a good Hindu. Leave me alone. The Buddhist will tell him, he said, look, you be a good Christian, I'll be a good Buddhist. Leave me alone. Not so the Muslim. The Muslim is told to tell him that God is one God, he's not three in one. So, Wala taqulu salasa. He's made to say, the Muslim is made to say, he said, look, don't eat the pig. Don't drink alcohol. Don't gamble. Don't be promiscuous. Shh. At every step. He is coming into confrontation with the Christian way of life. He is a challenge. He is a challenge. And like in South Africa, for 300 years, the Christians have been hammering at our people. 300 years. The first people that went there, they were taken there, were the, the people, a group of people in my country, in South Africa, called Malays. See, when the Dutch, when they conquered Indonesia, those of our brethren who were fighting for their freedom, they were captured as prisoners of war and shipped to the Cape of Good Hope and sold to the white men as slaves. Then when the British, your people here, when they conquered Malaysia, those of our brethren who were fighting for their freedom, they were captured as prisoners of war and shipped to the Cape of Good Hope, Good Hope for the white man, and sold to the white men as slaves. For 300 years, these people are being hammered to have them Christianized. But after 300 years of hammering, they came out one of the most militant Muslim communities in the world, the Malays of the Cape. One of the most militant Muslim communities. 